is probably going to be your group unless you see me afterwards and you're like, the group leader is, you know, demon from hell. Type of thing. Uh, wow. Anything short of demon from hell, you got to stay in the group. probably going to be the group you're with, again, unless it's a major catastrophe for you, and if it is, you know, you can come talk to us. I do want to say, before I jump into what I'm going to say uh, tonight, thank you to the group leaders, and, and will we, yeah. So Greg Jones and Mark Mecca are the men's group leaders, and uh, Sue Jones and Hillary Hale and Lisa LaPisca are the women's group leaders. And if there are more folks who start coming, then we'll have more groups and everything will be great. And we'll probably ask one of you that are sitting here to lead one of those groups. So, uh, what's that? And, and then the youth are being led by Angela and Joe Hodges and Katie LaPen. So, thank you to them for. The grade school kids are in the yellow and green room being led by Catherine Marshall. So Alright, so we're going to kind of jump in on uh, why we're doing this. Alright, uh, so if you've been in my Sunday morning class lately, I've been talking about the Anglican tradition. And the picture that I've been trying to paint in the Sunday morning class is a, the picture of a very high view of Holy Scripture. Okay? So what undergirds so much of what we do here at St. Lawrence, uh, and it undergirds why we're doing this type of Bible study, because you guys have been talking about the what and the how and the when and all that over the last you know, 30, 40 minutes. But I want to talk about why we're doing this. So why we're doing this is we have this incredibly high view of the Bible in our tradition. And I just kind of summed it up with two different uh, quotes from two different pieces uh, that are very valuable to our tradition. Uh, this one is from what's called the ordinal. The ordinal is the rite of ordination. Every priest, when he's ordained or deacon or bishop, has to answer not just on his own behalf, but on behalf of the whole church. What priests are supposed to do, they're supposed to speak on behalf of the group. Uh, and so when, when I was ordained, and when, if you were here, was it, what, just a few, three months ago, yesterday, when, when Father Cooper was ordained, we had to say this, and this is uh, one of these key things that we express faith uh, in God and as he's revealed himself to us in the scriptures. So we say the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testaments, are the word of God and contain all things necessary to salvation, right? So, so God speaks it and everything that we need to know for the saving relationship that we are invited to with him, we can find in Holy Scripture. It's been in every single book of common prayer that's ever been uh, produced and it continues to be in our prayer book that we use in our church uh, today. The class that I'm teaching right now on Sunday mornings is about the what's called the Chicago Lambeth Quadrilateral or the Lambeth Quadrilateral or whatever you want to call it. But it's sort of four essential points that Anglicans have, have really wanted to uh, hang their hat on. And in those four essential points, the first point is that the Bible contains all things necessary for salvation and that is the ultimate rule and standard of faith, right? So uh, you think about it, it's, it's that which we measure everything by when it comes to our understanding of God. So why are we doing this Bible study, and why are we making this effort? Why are we here on a Wednesday night, you know, when it's probably happy hour somewhere, or you could be somewhere else? Uh, you're here because you're part of a community that has a very high view scripture. When I say community, I mean a worldwide community of like 85, 90 million people. That's how many Anglicans there are worldwide. And, and a tradition that reaches back through 
through the centuries, okay? So our community is not just what happens here at 519 North Kimball Avenue. Our community is this worldwide expression of Christianity. And the very first thing that we hang our hat on is that the Bible is the, the word of God, contains all things necessary for salvation, and is the ultimate rule and standard of faith. <laughs> Before we go on, though, I want to talk about something specific to St. Lawrence that led to tonight. All right. So I just want to take a step back and kind of think about where we are as a church and where we are as a church family and what the last several years have been here at St. Lawrence. And many of you were here through all these experiences and some of you weren't here. And I'll try to catch you up if you're uh, if you're not sure what I'm where I'm going. Uh, probably five years ago, we uh, we knew we were out of space here at St. Lawrence. Most of the activities that we were uh, doing were super crowded. Every room was, was packed, uh, and we figured we could use some more space around here. So it, our, our movement towards some type of physical plant expansion was twofold. One was... You know, we wanted to build a bigger boat so more people could get into that boat. But the second reason we wanted to expand was we wanted to start new ministries. We knew new ministries would follow new buildings. And so one of the things that we were excited about as we looked forward towards that expansion was to see what God would provide in terms of new ministries with a new building. It was a big part of our parish life and 2016, uh, and, and many of you participate in all those events, uh, which which haven't yet come to fruition, because as many of you know, there's been a lawsuit that's sort of in the background of St. Lawrence's life and the Diocese of Fort Worth's life for 10 years uh, now, uh, and, and that lawsuit has had some adverse effects on the expansion. So we got together in February, the parish staff and the vestry, the, the church board here, and we said, what's our vision forward? How do we keep going forward as a parish? Uh, we were excited about these new ministries that God was going to provide with the new buildings, uh, but, but clearly the buildings are no longer possible, at least at this point. So what should we do? And the ministry and the staff were praying together. We were studying the Bible together. And everybody said, we got to start moving forward with some of the new ministries, whether we have a new building or not. Right? So part of tonight's effort is to move forward with a whole new idea for us at St. Lawrence. As far as I know, and I've been here over nine years at this point, we've not done a Bible study like this in this type of form. Uh, but part of our effort is, is to move forward as a church when we can't move forward with a physical structure. What we can, or at least what we believe we can do, is move forward spiritually. Part of the lawsuit that we're in, a big part of it, and I don't think I need to remind you of this, but I will, is because of slide number one, right? We took a really high view of Scripture uh, we are, are uh, betting the church property on a high view of Scripture. That's what it came down to. That's what the lawsuit's really all about. Uh, and, and we said, here's where we are. This is what represents our church family. And, and we just can't look the other way. We just can't budge on this. So this, we said, is a critical identity marker for St. Lawrence. And, of course, it's part of the reason that this lawsuit's in the background, and it is and it's a big part of the reason uh, that we haven't been able to do our expansion. So what we're doing here is we're betting everything on a high view of Scripture. So we figured as a church family, we better double down on that. We better spend as much time as we possibly can making sure that we ourselves, personally, not just as a tradition, not just as a book of common prayer, not just as a formulary, but as individuals, that we are going to walk the walk and we are going to, we are going to try our best 
to embody those principles that are laid out in these formularies, okay? So part of what we're doing is, as a church, sort of letting God shape the future by, by getting into his word. Now, why this specific type of study? Well, and I think you guys talked about this maybe in the small groups you were just in. Well, one of the things is it's kind of an immersion approach, this particular type of study, because we're going to spend uh, 25 sessions talking about John's Gospel over the next several months, and we're going to attack every single section of the Gospel. There are uh, Most weeks it's a chapter, but some weeks the chapters are divided into two, whether it's a some, some chapters are really long, like John 6 is really, really long, or 70-something verses, so we've divided that into two weeks. Uh, but basically, you're going to attack the, the scripture in three different ways, I mean, through personal study, and, and to, you know, this, this study is going to be whatever you put into it, you get out of it, type of a thing, you know, I mean, in the spiritual life, a lot of times we go to our little spiritual ATM machine and we're making withdrawals. You know, you show up and you make withdrawals all the time, and then your surprise is overdrawn. So you got to put something in there. You got to invest in the spiritual life, and so this study is an invitation to start investing in the spiritual life because you're going to need it. There's going to be a day where you need that withdrawal, uh, but but if there's nothing that you put in there, then, then there ain't nothing that's going to come out. So it's going to be personal study, then there's going to be the small group time, and then there's each week we're not going to be doing this, we're not going to be talking about that, sort of the nuts and bolts of how we're going to do it or why we're going to do it. We're going to actually just be talking about what John wrote, what it means, and trying to dive down through the layers of what John wrote in this lecture, right? John's Gospel. The heart of the Bible, as some of the saints have called it, are the four canonical Gospels. And so when we were thinking about this study, we wanted to start with one of the Gospels. And a big part of the reason that we chose St. John's Gospel is John is good at narrative and at reflection at the same time. He's good at, at telling the story sort of in a blow-by-blow -blow way, and he's good at highlighting the meaning of what is happening in the gospel. So, for instance, John's going to tell you what Jesus was up to one day, but he's going to tell you what this really means. What does it signify? What does it point to as he's uh, talking about the narrative? So John's gospel, in a unique way in the New Testament, is really a, a, a theological reflection on what all these things mean. So it gets us right to the heart of, of Jesus' earthly life, and it gets us right to the heart of what it all means uh, as John is telling the story. The other thing that we would say about St. John's Gospel that I think is pretty exciting is that John is sort of a master of subtlety. And one of the things I'd ask all of you to do as y'all are reading through John's Gospel is, is to look for subtlety in his Gospel because there are all kinds of subtle cues all over the place that we're going to be trying to point you to along the way. There, it, there's so many subtle references to the Old Testament, to Jesus as the fulfillment of the prophecies, uh, that, that we can't even highlight all of them as we go through the study. But one of the things that we, one of our, our goals, and we'll get to this in a minute, is just to get people kind of turning the pages of the Bible and looking in the Bible for themselves and, and reading the Bible for themselves, and get all of you doing that. And John's Gospel, uh, he is uniquely positioned in a way uh, that will have us turning to all kinds of Old Testament passages to know, well, what's the backstory behind what's going on in the narrative? Or, or one of these little details, these subtleties that I'm talking about, uh, it will have us uh, flipping through the Bible. So we take the Bible as a whole as we read it, that one book's going to help us understand another book, uh, that it forms this coherent whole, because the same God we believe speaks on every page of the Bible. And so one of the things that you're going to see as you go through this study 
in every week's homework and every week's questions you're going to be answering, you're going to be asked to read all kinds of passages that are outside of John's gospel that will help illuminate what John is getting at in his gospel. All right? So that's one of the things, that was one of our goals, is to, to find a book that we thought could get people sort of cross-referencing and going all over the place. The point of St. John's Gospel is, uh, is told to us uh, by St. John himself. Uh, St. John in chapter 20, verse 31, says that these things are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So St. John's telling us why he wrote his gospel in this verse. He's telling us that he's after a lot more than just communicating information about a guy who was a Palestinian rabbi. All right? He's hoping to produce belief, and he's hoping in that belief for those who read his gospel to obtain life. The word believe is one of his favorite words. It appears 98 times throughout the gospel. And it emphasizes that this is what John is after. John is writing his gospel, and the reason we are reading his gospel is for the purpose that he wrote it originally, so that you may have life, so that you may believe, and that in believing you may have life in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is going to be a very Christocentric approach. Christ-centered approach, centered around the person of Jesus Christ and a life-giving relationship with him. All right, let's talk about what our goals are for the study real quick. Goal number one is to hear God's voice together, that we believe that God speaks to us in Holy Scripture. He speaks to individuals, and of course, he speaks to the whole church, and he speaks to everybody in the room through his scriptures. St. Ambrose says, says it this way, when we pray, we, we speak to God when we pray, we listen to him when we read the scriptures. So, so to be a congregation uh, that, that is on fire for the Lord and loves the Lord and wants to listen to his voice, that's the first goal. And we believe that that goal can be reached uh, through this particular exercise through this type of Bible study. I would say the second goal for this study is to feast together. You know, we have the whole, we have a big portion of the church family that's here tonight, and I, I hope that this is something that we can keep going, and I love that, that literally everybody in the church from, you know, the nursery age kids all the way up through us, everybody is on the same page. Everybody's gonna be reading the same stuff. Uh, the kids are gonna be getting the same story obviously age appropriate maybe some of you it's more appropriate to uh, head to uh, green room or yellow room if you find yourself in uh, a little over your head uh, but I love that we're all going to literally be on the same page so that we can all feast on God's word together of course Jesus says you know once you not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth so all of us will see scripture then as our food, our nourishment, our sustenance as Christian people, and we'll be feasting together on what God has revealed to us. And then the last uh, point that I would say is that we would grow together. Uh, and growing together, of course, was the name of our uh, capital campaign we did, and it's, it's, a, it's a verse that we've come back to time and time again. Uh, but the, the goal of this is for the church family to grow closer to the Lord uh, and then, of course, to each other, right? So part of the model that we have set up is that we will grow closer to each other as well, hopefully through these, uh, these fellowship small groups. So first, of course, we love the Lord our God, and we try to love him with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, and then we are called to love our neighbors ourselves. And so in some way, we're hoping uh, that this uh, exercise will advance both of those goals that every one of us is called to. This is a verse that some of you are familiar with, Acts 2.42. It's the first description of the Christian church in the book of Acts, uh, in the, the 
very early days of the church, there were four things, four markers that St. Luke points out as he writes the book of Acts, uh, that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Um, when we say the apostles' teaching, I hope what's in your mind is the New Testament. Because that's what the apostles' teaching is. I mean, the, the New Testament is the teaching of the first apostles, the apostles Peter and Paul, and of course the, the canonical gospel writers. Uh, and they have devoted their lives to fellowship. And so again, what we're hoping to do is, in this study, uh, devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostle John. Uh, and again, reference in some of the other scripture passages, uh, and to fellowship with one another in the body of Christ, helping each other more fully understand the teaching of the Apostle John. Because a big component of this is, yeah, you're going to be out there on your own, kind of reading the Bible, and, and there's going to be times where you're like, I have no idea what in the world they're getting at. And that's part of what the fellowship is designed for. Right, is we're not just kind of hanging out there on our own, but we're here to help each other. We're helping, we're helping each other understand. Of course, the breaking of bread is the Eucharist, which we uh, are invited to every day here at St. Lawrence. We have Mass seven days a week, uh, but certainly every Sunday. And then the prayers, and, and part of your small group time, and I don't know if you guys already went over this, but at the end of every small group time, there's going to be like a prayer time. Would y'all already do that? Not sure. No. Prayer requests. So that, you know, again, we'll be praying for each other. Maybe. We're not sure if we're going to be praying for each other. All right. I'm going to talk to you about this real quick and then we're wrapping up. So this is like a 25 minute deal every week by 755. Um, we'll be done be on the road so that everybody can go do something else. Every week at the end, you're going to get a packet. All right? Did y'all already talk about the packet? Uh -huh. You didn't see the packet? Okay. Oh, this mysterious packet that you've heard about already. Some, oh, the, the, the youth have the packet. So, so here's the thing that's a little bit counterintuitive about it. All right? So I'm just going to make sure that we highlight this again for everybody like a little notes section, an outline section, and Father Cooper and I are both writing these as we go. Uh, so big thanks to Father Cooper for that. Uh, so we're writing these as we go. So the notes are about what we've done tonight, and then there's a group of questions, and the questions are both backward-looking and forward-looking. Okay, so so this week, y'all are going to start talking about, uh, you're going to start reading St. John's prologue, the first part of the Gospel of John, John 1, 1 through 18. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of questions about it, and you're going to be, you know, answering those on your own. And then when you come next week, the first thing you'll do after we pray together is you'll talk to your group. And if there's questions that you don't know the answers to, and you're like, I have no idea what this means, then you know you can write down, I have no idea what this means, if that's what you want to do, you know, uh, or Bible for dummies or whatever you know you want to write in that section, you can write that. But the packet is intended to be both, both at once. Uh, I think both at once means the same thing. Uh, backwards and forwards looking. Okay, so you're going to get a packet at the end of every session. The expectations. As I said a minute ago, you're going to get out of this what you put into it. It's like everything else in life. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you want to get a lot out of it, then spend some time doing this homework and answering these questions and reading the Bible passages that we uh, have suggested. And there may be times where you're reading the like cross-reference Bible passage and you're like, I have no idea. Idea why they would ask me to do it, but y'all just kind of trust me on this one. It does have something to do with the passage that you're reading in John. Okay, and I promise I didn't put in like some, you know, random part of the Bible in there just to see if y'all I could get y'all to read it. <laughs> so, so it does have something to do with what John is talking about. So, so again, 
the goal is to, to you know, read it and have a great time reading it and to feast on God's Word. But if you come on a Wednesday and you're in the parking lot and it's 625 and you're, you know, oh, getting that packet out for the first time, um, anyway, please, like, it's going to be fine. You don't have to put your nose in the corner or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, you get to come, you get to participate, you get to be part of the church family, it's going to be okay. So we're not taking like some punitive approach. So if you're like, I didn't do the homework, so I'm definitely not going. The only thing I'd ask you to do is, first of all, do the homework. But life happens, <laughs> so, you know, you want to do the homework, and then, you know, there were, I don't know what happened. You know, something happened. Your boss called you, or there was a food diaper, or whatever, you know. <laughs> Whatever your reality is on that front. So come anyway and engage anyway is what I'd ask you to do. Communication. So this lecture, if you can believe it, is being videotaped. Uh, and it's going to be put on the internet. This particular, like, it's, it's a joke. Right? So every Thursday morning, on the St. Lawrence website, this beautiful website that we have here, well, a couple of ugly mugs on it. There is a new tab on the website, and I know all of you are looking at the website all the time, so I'm just pointing out the new tab, <laughs> called Bible Study. And that tab refers to this class. Very exciting. So on the Bible study tab, we're going to take a little tour of it. It's going to have both the lessons that we are about to hand out. So the lesson is the packet. So the packet that we're handing out, you can access it online. And it has a little cool little feature in the PDF where you can type right into the PDF. I don't know what that's called, but it's going to be really like 1996 technology. Uh, and then the lecture video from this session is going to be there. So let's say next week you are out of town and you already know you're going to be out of town. Well, you're not going to have to miss any of the benefit of this because you're going to be able to get the lesson, the packet, the outline, and the questions and all that. And you're going to be able to watch this amazing lecture via the miracle of YouTube. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be on the website every week. So this is done uh, in hopes that you know if you got a miss, if you're out of town, you can still plug back in so that you don't you know think well I missed one week, I'm definitely behind, and I'm definitely never going again. Uh, hopefully this helps you a little bit. Okay, so this is St. Lawrence's website, and that's where it's going to be lessons and lecture videos. Feel free to uh, to reach out to your group leaders, and your group leaders will probably be reaching out to you between Wednesday nights. Uh, but if you don't hear from them, or you don't, you know, if you have their email set directly to go to trash or whatever it is, <laughs> you can still go to the St. Lawrence website to the Bible study tab. Some of you probably already are in the trash folder. I know that I achieved that status long ago for many of you. That is the last thing I want to say. I want to say thank you very much for coming tonight. So we're going to hand out these packets here in just a second. And then from now on, we're not going to be talking about sort of introductory stuff. We're going to be talking about the Bible and learning about it. And I promise you one of the things that you're going to learn in this uh, study is St. John's Gospel has lots and lots of layers to it, and I, I mean, I have studied it several times before, and as we're preparing the outlines, I'm learning a lot. So I promise you, it'll be worth your time. Would you stand? We'll have a prayer, and then we'll get on the road. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Hear your word and jump into your word and the opportunity to be together. Bless our families tonight. Bless our parish family. Help us always to grow in faith and hope and love. And may God
God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless each of us tonight.